Well, welcome back everyone. Today, we're gonna to be doing another enclosure setup for another beautiful spider. This one, just by showing you guys the container, you may already know which one we're gonna be setting up today. But the species in question, we'll unveil that one in a little bit. Now this species is a new world species and it requires slightly higher humidity. So I've gone and taken the liberty on repurposing one of the older enclosures and uh, it's got a bit of an acrylic on, the, on one side so it retain a bit more of the humidity. Uh, it does have one of those dark cork backgrounds installed already. It's not really what I wanted to use. I had an idea for doing a custom made background for this particular enclosure. And uh, I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll figure out why down the road here as we go into it. But uh, right now for purposes, this animal needs to be set up more so than me trying to create something that I want to create for it right away. And down the road, I've got lots more of these enclosures. I just didn't have any new ones ready to go. Uh, so we're gonna be setting this one up here and building new enclosures for these beautiful animals is all part of the fun. So let's get to it. So that's basically the general layout that we're going to be using for this species. This species in question is a true arboreal species. Now you might wonder why we're only using a 12 inch cube. Well, this is a species that comes from Mexico and it basically inhi inhibits uh, or lives in uh, tree hollows. So I've taken four different types of cork tubes with different types of openings and created all sorts of areas within it. Now this particular species is a rather unique species and it also has a rather unique name so we have to do something a little bit different a little bit more special for this particular spider this spider goes by the name in captivity of salmopuyas victori it is known as the mexican half and half or the darth maul tarantula Anybody that knows me knows I'm a hardcore Star Wars fan. So the chance to make a nice cool habitat for a Darth Maul tarantula is something I definitely want to do. Now, that's why I was talking about the background. Now, anybody knows anything about Star Wars this is where the nerd's going to come out. But uh, Darth Maul comes from a planet known as Dathomir. And it's all very red and dark and, you know, evil and foreboding looking. And I had the idea of doing some sort of background like that, but I just was challenged in trying to find ways and means. I often contemplated the idea of taking some of these different products and maybe uh, painting them or dyeing them black or something. I just thought, no, no, that is taking more the needs or the wants, I guess, of creating a cool habitat. But we always have to look at the needs of the animals first and foremost. So I think this will work really, really well, but now I have some special accoutrements to add to this enclosure to really, really bring it up to that next level. Something I think is gonna be absolutely cool for this particular animal. So I thought, how do we recreate some sort of unique alien-like landscape that is still gonna meet all the needs of the tarantula? Well, if it's the Darth Maul tarantula, first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need Darth Maul. This is a six inch figure. He's definitely gonna go into this enclosure. But how do we make this type of a habitat really look like something out of an alien landscape? So I went and looked into my, uh, my little, my tickle trunk of all sorts of little random little bits and bobs of stuff. And I found some unique things that I've used to build different dioramas and stuff. These are unique little things. Honestly, these are probably little silk parts that are available from things like the dollar store or any of your crafting type stores. This looks honestly like bird millet, but it's been dyed, so I don't even know. But I just thought some of these different unique little things would look kind of cool and give it that nice little touch. Well, that's decidedly different. Something, you know, it's like a bit like an like alien landscape, but still meets definitely meets the needs of the animal. It can get into all these different areas. 
Got to obviously give it a water dish. But uh, like all my other Salmopuya species that I have, I have the Venezuelan uh, Sun Tiger, and we have a Pulker, which is the Panama Blonde. They all do very, very similar. This one comes from a certain area of the Veracruz region of Mexico, and it's a pretty uh, protected area because they don't want the species to be uh, completely extirpated from the wild due to overcollecting. So the area is kind of protected. But there, there's Darth Maul in amongst this bizarre alien type habitat. I think it's rather cool looking. Not sure what you guys think, but it was kind of cool. It was kind of funky, a little bit of whimsy, having some fun doing something a little bit different. Like a weird alien landscape. Now, let's get the spider into it. Before we get there, I think I like the idea of maybe going uh, and putting in some, some nice green moss. I think when, when the tarantula walks on it and stuff like that, one, it'll retain a bit more humidity for where the animal would, would come from, but also I think it'll really be a nice contrast to the colors. So let's go and put that, and I think it'll make Darth Maul himself actually stand out a little bit better in the environment. <music> pretty cool and yeah I do like the idea of the addition of a bit more of the moss really to retain that humidity level a little bit better for this particular species I'm not really sold on these things here they just remind me of like bird spray millet but for the purposes of today's enclosure they definitely meet the needs they look like some sort of weird alien landscape and I think it looks kind of cool so let's go ahead and get the spider all right so hopefully this will go rather uneventful but uh, here she is here the Salmopuyas victori the Mexican half and half or more importantly the Darth Maul tarantula we've got our catch cup we've got our brush the species is a it's a new world species as mentioned it does not have urticating hairs however it does possess slightly more uh, potent venom medically significant venom and they are also known to be extremely flighty and bolty and really, really do not like, like uh, the light. So they're very, very reclusive. We've given it lots of options for hides, but it is an incredible, incredible uh, having this vibrant red on its, on its back half and then jet black on its front half. It is really, really incredible. But uh, I'm assuming we can probably, you, know, you can see her right there. The males and females are, are sexually dimorphic. They're easy to tell apart. So this is a mature female. I've already gone and put the lid back up. Let's see if we can just basically kind of get her to kind of walk on into the new enclosure. Not certain because I went and sprayed everything down. There we go. Come on. No, I don't want you coming out. That's not what we want to do. We just want to ideally to get you in there exactly like that. And then we can take some beautiful pictures and videos and some close-ups. And there she is, the incredible Salmopuyas victori. The Darth Maul tarantula. I think she's going to absolutely love the new environment. So as I mentioned, she's truly arboreal. So we've gone and set up all these different hides. Be a mimic her natural type of hide. Maybe not on the planet that she seems to feel that she may be on right now. But it's defensive. It's very, very fast and aggressive if provoked. Now the scientific name was named in honor as a patronym in honor of Victor H. Jimenez Arcos. Now it's a Mexican herb herpetologist who actually was the first who collected the very first specimen of this species. And this is a young female, so she could still gain another, maybe another two inches in size. They'll reach up to about six inches or so, 12 to 14 centimeters. And females should live 10 to 12 years. 
So this one's probably already, I don't know, four or five. Good high humidity, 70, 80, but with good ventilation. So as mentioned, we've closed off half. I've got some good ventilation. We've got cross ventilation, which comes from the front. Ignore this, this will be where her, her name badge will go, similar to the other ones. But she is incredible. And somewhat as expected, she's exploring her habitat and more than likely is gonna find one of her burrows right away. And we'll probably never see her again in daylight. <laughs> but she's an incredible spider. I'm honored to have her in my collection. And this was a pretty fun build. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you, my friends. Take care.